Good morning, church family. My family is all well. I hope yours is too. May the peace of Christ be with you. Good morning, First Church. It's good to see everybody and be seen. I miss my church family. Good morning. Welcome again to another virtual worship service from First Presbyterian Church 1793, where today we celebrate the gift of the Trinity, that mystical connection between the three persons of God. We celebrate God as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit classically, and we today celebrate the interrelatedness, the oneness of God as we celebrate God's love for us in all three persons. Thank you for being with us today. We hope that you will find spiritual nourishment as we worship together on Trinity Sunday. Here a passage from Matthew's Gospel in the 28th chapter that speaks of God in three persons in the Great Commissioning. Now the 11 disciples went to Galilee to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw Jesus, they worshiped him. But some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always, 
to the close of the age. The witness to God's word, thanks be to God. Hear God's word in Corinthians, 2 Corinthians 13, 11 through 13. Finally, brothers and sisters, farewell. Put things in order. Listen to my appeal. Agree with one another. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the saints greet you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. The witness to God's word. Thanks be to God. the story of a man who lived in a community and came to church to visit for the first time. He was a longtime resident of the community. He came in, stayed through the entire service, and as the pastor greeted him at the door, the pastor said it was nice to see him, and the man said, I'm never coming back here again. The pastor said, why is that? Has, has someone done something to offend you? And the man said, no, he said, I've lived in this community my whole life. And when I looked around and saw the people that were in this room, I decided I'm never coming back. And the pastor said, why not? And the man said, pastor, your church is filled with hypocrites. And the pastor said, you're welcome to come here anytime. We always have room for one more. <laughs> The truth of is that there is no perfect church because honestly, the church is made up of imperfect people. We are who we are, uh, warts and all. Sometimes we get it right and sometimes we don't and we come here as people who are forgiven and we connect to each other as people who long to offer the generous acceptance that Jesus offers us, us to other people as well. Today on this Trinity Sunday, we have a passage from the book of 2 Corinthians, and uh, it should be pointed out that amid all of the wonderful words encouraging people to agree with each other and to be at peace, the backstory is that the church at Corinth is one of the most troubled places uh, in all of the communities where Paul has launched churches. These two books, 1st and 2nd Corinthians, were epistles, letters, that Paul wrote to these communities where he had helped launch the churches. And way back in 1st Corinthians, he writes to this group of people, these people whom he dearly loves and encourages them effectively to play well with one another, 
to get along, to be in agreement, to not have divisions and subgroups, to, to, but to be in unity. In fact, some of the language that shows up is that the church at Corinth, and I want to get all of these, the people at Corinth are quarreling. They offer jealousy, anger, selfishness, slander, gossip, conceit, and disorder. Now, if you were to advertise a church and put that on your, out on your billboard, who would ever want to come in to be part of that? Well, the truth is there are communities, and perhaps every community of faith, where we have our issues moving along. Uh, first and foremost, if we keep our focus on the God who loves us, we can find ways of moving ahead together. Uh, First Presbyterian Church, 1793, I should tell you, is one of the most uh, agreeable places uh, that I've ever been. I've been at this church for about 11 years now, and people here speak the truth in love. The people here are bright and articulate with wide interests, with bright intellects and intelligence and skill sets. And for the most part, we work well together, play nicely together to get things done. One of the best things I love about this family of faith is that we focus on doing as much or more for people outside these walls as we do for people who are here. We're not a closed club. And our mission in sharing the good news of God's love with the world is that we follow this God who loves us unconditionally and we seek to do the same. It's been said over the years that the church makes good people better and bad people worse, and sometimes that's true, I guess. But this passage today has to do with the transformation, transformational nature of the faith, which Paul is still imploring the people of Corinth to take under consideration so that they may be transformed by the love of God, so that they can be in agreement and working together toward common goals. These days in our culture and society, in a time of real divisiveness over all sorts of issues, in terms also uh, in terms of how we're moving ahead together as, as a family, as a nation, as a world community in dealing with this uh, coronavirus pandemic, there are days that we're not always on our best behavior, where people are stepping back and blaming each other. This doesn't just happen in nations and in, in politics, but it happens in family systems as well, where sometimes we're not on our best behavior. And sometimes what we need is just to step back and take a deep breath and attempt to look at things from another person's point of view sometimes a person who's on the opposite side of a difficult issue so that we can discover what we have in common. And what we all have in common is that God loves every one of us beyond a shadow of a doubt. No, what, no matter what labels we paste on each other or what labels uh, other people paste on us, God loves every one of us uniquely and individually and beyond a shadow of a doubt. Today on this Trinity Sunday, we celebrate the way that God loves us as a divine parent, uh, as a loving brother and redeemer, savior. God as father, father, son, and Holy Spirit. God shows up as father and as mother in scriptures with evidence of God's masculinity and femininity. God shows up for us as a savior who gave his very life for us and as someone who was our brother in the faith, who connected us to God as we are connected to Jesus, so we are connected to God. And finally, as Holy Spirit, this mystical sort of uh, entity that blows and we see the effects of it, just as we can not see the spirit, we can't see the wind that blows through trees, we can see the effects of it, but we can see the effects of the Holy Spirit as we pray for the guidance and hope and, and um, support that we need and as we receive it along life's way. God gives us what we need for our journeys and that's all we need to know today. And God gives us the gift of each other, sometimes in person and sometimes connected in virtual ways and through Zoom meetings and conferences and all sorts of social media. God connects us and loves us. 
And someday down the road, we'll get to be together in person in ways that soothe our souls and help the world to be a better, brighter place. We encourage you to know that God loves you in all three persons and God loves you no matter what sort of person you are today and that God supports you along the way. So pray for each other, pray for God in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. We welcome you to a time of prayer as part of our virtual worship today and invite you to celebrate the gift of Trinity on this Sunday following Pentecost. We'll begin some prayers with words about the Holy Spirit, perhaps the least emphasized of the three persons of the Trinity. We'll also offer some time for you to pray in silence for other people and other places, and some silent time to pray for yourself. Today we'll be using the trespasses and those who trespass against us version of the Our Father, the Lord's Prayer. Shall we pray? Almighty God, you poured out the Holy Spirit on believers at Pentecost, drawing them together in the mission of the church. Give us great enthusiasm for your work and keep your spirit with us so that, united and in peace with one another, we may live new lives as ambassadors of Jesus Christ, who is the head of the church, our savior, and our strength. Gracious God, we thank you for the myriad ways in which you support and encourage us along our way. And we thank you for the gift of the Trinity as you appear to us sometimes as a comforting parent and other times as a wonderful savior and brother to us and other times in the form of Holy Spirit as you give us mystical help that is beyond our imagination. We pray that you will be with us today in these challenging times and that you will unite us in prayer and give us exactly what we need for our journey precisely when we need it. We come to you now to pray on behalf of others with our prayers of intercession, to pray for people about whom we care and places about which we care in a time of quiet reflection. Be with us, gracious God, as silently now we pray for others. Thank you for hearing our prayers for others. We know that you care deeply and passionately about each one of us. And so we come to you now with our own personal prayers, knowing that you support us and encourage us, that you equip us for our life journey. Be with us now as we bring you our hopes and dreams, as well as our fears and frustrations, knowing that you care about us through and through. Hear us, loving God, as silently now, we pray for ourselves. Thank you for hearing us in silence and be with us now as we join voices in praying words that Jesus taught disciples as he prayed the Our Father, the Lord's Prayer, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. In the words of today's scripture, I charge you to find agreement with one another and to live in peace. And as you do so, may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you, both now and forevermore. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen.